and talk about biology semester two, activity 3.3.1, which is about inheritance in action. And I'm just going to talk about it. And then hopefully this can help. Once I get the link, I can send this to whoever and it can help you get through this lesson. So the question that is on here is, Imagine that you are a doctor in a maternity ward. During your last shift, 20 babies were born. 10 of them had blue eyes and 10 had brown eyes. 15 had round heads and five had pointed heads. Given the phenotypes, what are the possible genotypes for these babies? So the, the first thing that we have to think about when actually answering the question is, what is this question actually asking? So it gave us the phenotypes and phenotypes is the way something actually physically looks. And then genotypes is the way the genes actually are. So when we're doing talking about genotypes, we're gonna give alleles, which are going to be the specific chromosomes or whatever that we're going to use for this. Now, this is all hypothetical because we do not have that much information on this um, question. So, for example, we have 20 babies, 10 had blue eyes, and 10 had brown eyes. So, if you know anything about genetics or if you just looked at a random crowd of 20 people, you're going to see the majority of them have brown eyes and only a few are going to have blue eyes. So we know that brown eyes is dominant over blue eyes. So in this possible, in this specific situation, we see that there are 10 blue eyed babies and 10 brown eyed babies. So about half and half. So our possible genotypes, just because we know brown is dominant, I would use, I always use the first letter of the first of the color that we were talking about for, um, first. So we were talking about brown and blue, so I'm just gonna use B. So we would use big B, big B for brown, and big B, little b for blue. Now, if you used R, Q, Z, X, it doesn't matter at all. I like to use letters that have different looking capital and lowercase letters so you can differentiate them. Um, so anyway, we have, 10 and 10, so I would say big B, big B equals brown, big B, little B equals blue. As far as the 15 round heads and five pointed heads, we have um, obviously more round heads than we have pointed heads. So round, we're gonna say is dominant because there's more of them. So I'm gonna use again R because we're talking about round first. So I say big R, big R for round, and big R, little r for pointed. So the pointed would be the recessive, and the round would be the dominant. Um, so those are the possible genotypes. Again, you can use whatever letters you'd like. It doesn't matter as long as you see what you're doing. All right, question number two says, what? Oh, there's Rachel. I'm going through um, this because nobody showed up, so I'm just kind of going through it, and then we can send this to whoever needs it. All right, so on question number two, it says, what traits do their parents probably have? So use what you know about dominant and recessive traits to answer your, or to explain your answer. So when Mendel did all of this, he learned there is something called complete dominance, co-dominance, and incomplete dominance. So in this situation, we're going to say it's complete dominance. So, sorry. Um, we're going to say, what traits do the parents have? Well, if the babies in that um, maternity ward um, had brown eyes and blue eyes. We're going to assume that the parents also had brown eyes and blue eyes. Now, because 10 of them had blue and 10 of them had brown, we're also going to assume that the majority of the parents had blue since blue is recessive. And so in order for blue to show up so much as the brown, we're going to have to realize that majority of the parents had to have blue eyes for it to even be half and half. Um, just one second. 
Um, okay, and then for the round heads and pointed heads, it was obviously more round heads than pointed heads. So we know that round heads is dominant over pointed heads. And so we would say that they both, there was round head and point head um, parents. And we would say that there was probably more round head parents, even though it is dominant and less point head parents. So which ones are dominant? Which ones are recessive? We would say that brown eyes are dominant to blue and round heads are dominant to point heads.